Hi, this is Steven Chin at the Javelin Conference. We're doing night hacking interviews with different speakers and luminaries. We're also traveling around Germany speaking at Java user groups for the next week or two on motorcycle. But now I'm with Karula Lilienthal. How very are you doing? Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing very good. Thanks, Steve. And you're doing a presentation here at Javaland about yes. technical debt. Yes. Um, and this afternoon at 3 o'clock, I will um, give a speech on technical depth. And yeah, I've been Very working nice. on that for quite a while. So OK, so just for folks who, who aren't familiar with the term, can mm -hmm. you give like the, the, the quick pitch on yeah. what technical debt yeah. is? Well, technical depth is a, is a metaphor to explain um, uh, that if you do something with um, it, while you're programming where you're not so happy about um, and you know already that someday you will pay for it. So yeah. um, it's a metaphor for um, a kind of programming, um, voluntary or non-voluntary, that will, uh, you will have to pay off later. And this is, this is like taking some debt at the bank. Well, it's, it's sort yeah, of the so same thing. Similar, <laughs> does, it, is, does it act like debt in the bank where it gets interest? Uh, well, I have the feeling because if you, st <laughs> <laughs> I often look at huge Java systems, other languages too, but a lot of Java systems, and you can see there, um, there are corners where the people say, "Well, I, I really don't like to touch it," and you have the feeling they did something wrong, and it got worse and worse over time. So I yeah, think it's yeah. a bit like interest. Yes, yeah, okay. I do think so. And you, speaking of systems, so you you look at a lot of yeah. different companies' yeah. systems, yes. and yes, that's what I like do in my day. Evaluate daily. them. Yeah, well, I do that in my daily work. Um, I've been looking in the last six, seven years at uh, about like 100 different wow. systems. And I go from, I mean, the clients call me yeah. and say, well, I know you have some expertise in that area. And then I go there with, together with colleagues, of course, as well. Uh -huh. And we do different, several kinds of an analysis. So in the first place, we look at the static. We use tools and... So static code analysis. Yeah, and then the people have problems with performance. Then we look at that question. Some people have problems with security, of course. I mean, it's often connected, related to each other as well. Yeah. And it's really amazing because, I mean, last week I, I had a system in my head of three million lines of code, all written in Java over 15 years. Wow. And you see the history and you talk to the people and they try <laughs> to explain why it came out this way. And, and so um, yeah, sure it's a really a lot of fun. here can relate to that. Yeah. If they worked yeah. on large legacy yeah. code bases, and, that, and is, the that nicest, is very typical. Yeah. And the nicest thing in the whole, uh, in, in this is um, to really help people to make their system better, to get yeah. rid of technical depth. Yeah. I, I do some quality reviews as well, but it's not so f so much fun to write a paper or, you know, yeah, a report. So you'd rather it's, help people rather yeah. than just tell yeah. them their Be systems yeah. are bad. <laughs> to, to, to describe refactorings and what to do and, you know, this is, this is a yeah. lot of fun. And do you, ever, do you yeah. ever go into a client and you look at their system and you're like, Wow, this is this is ninety better than ninety nine percent of the other systems out there. Like this has very little technical debt. Very good question. Um, if you would have asked me this question like three years ago, I would have said no, never ever. <laughs> <laughs> but in the last few years, um, more and more people understand that it's important to well to work on the investment huh, yeah. in the end, and yeah. they'd start to call me to help their their teams with a good system oh. to keep staying good. So um, it appears, yeah, that I, and, and it's a lot of fun to tell <laughs> a team, wow, you really did a good job. This, yeah. is, this is great. Yeah, that's a This rewarding. is even, even nicer <laughs> 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 than helping. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So what's the, what's the premise of the talk you're giving here at Javelin? Like, what do you want attendees to learn? Um, well, uh, what I um, do in my daily work is I look from three perspectives on software, actually, um, because in any tool you can find so many metrics and things you could measure. It's, I mean, you have to have some guidance, and this is what I'm going to try to, to uh, forward to the people, how I look at, at systems and why, because um, I've been writing a doctor's thesis like 10 yeah. years ago, and I have been looking at, at cognitive science to find out in what kind of structure people are quicker. P 
people find their way around. And this is uh, sort of part of what I'm going to show them in software and what it means for their brain. So yeah, this is that's sort of um, so how, like how I look at things. Of psychology for software yeah. developers. Yeah, because we have all these things, we try to do them, but if we have sort of a background and understand mm. why this is better to do it uh, in this way, yeah. Um, yeah. I think it, you can argue much better with your project leader or <laughs> <laughs> other people about it. a good it. case for why yeah. you might want to pay off a little yeah. bit of certain types of technical yeah. debt. Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. Um, any, any good, like, um, examples or anecdotes that you have that you think oh, can help people? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I've been uh, writing a book on technical depth in German, but um, yeah. it, it's full of anecdotes, of course. And, um, well, one of the things I always look at is um, how did the people um, uh, modularize their system? How many modules are there, Maven artif artifacts or whatever yeah, they have? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, well, Maven... Uh, creates uh, a system without any cycles, huh? which is a good story in the first place, um, because I want um, base functionality and other functionality to build yes, on top, so it's a very good, uh, good idea in the beginning. But the second thing I always look at is um, how is the, the size of these, these modules? Are there, and very often you find one that is very big, that is sort of half of the system, and yeah. then it's not a good modularization. No, well, it's not modularized. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's then, just a large yeah. legacy system with yeah. some things hanging off of it. Yeah, and I call it uneven modules. This uneven is how I modules. There is one big one with little satellites, <laughs> and it's not, it's not worth it. Is that, you know? like, is that like when you have like planets with the debris that yeah. floats around them? Yeah, a bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> but people could tell their management, well, we have 10 Maven artifacts. Yeah, no? you have modules. Well, cool, huh? Without yeah. cycles, perfect. Yeah. But if you look inside, it's it's a mess. <laughs> you know? So this is no, something that's, that's, I see very often. That's an interesting anti-pattern. Yeah. I think yeah. you would easily be fooled if you didn't think about it, that folks say they're modularized when they're not really. Yeah. And then you find other systems with not uneven modules, but good modularized. Yeah. And then you look inside and you, then you find one module where all the interfaces are inside. So... All the things related yeah, to that yeah, one module, yeah. it's all <laughs> But it's down there on the bottom, so yeah. you don't have cycles, so it's quite fine from that perspective. But, you know, I mean, it's not a good idea to have no. the interfaces separated from the modules. But if you look from a... Huh, graphical, theoretical point of view. You yeah. have no cycles, nice modules. Hmm. So it's always a question to understand what they, what they were trying to do here. And yeah, that I seems like that would good. defeat the purpose of modularizing because you couldn't update a module without mm. updating the, yeah. that block. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So I see that a lot. Um, then I see often systems um, where inside of those modules, there are huge class cycles. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I'm not a fan of that because um, it's not very easy to test. You don't see what is the base functionality and what's built on top. So it's not about cycles in general, but about modularization as w again on class level. And well, this is what people well, in old systems, like you find them 300, 500 classes all in a big <laughs> tangle. And the other day I had 6,000 6, in one. Thousand you can't imagine classes. that. Oh. <laughs> so this <Wow>. was really. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> huge. they weren't 6,000 copy paste. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a good thing as well. What I, um, I look, um, when I look at the architecture with, yeah. with people, um, we find mistakes, uh, violations, like uh, a lower uh, layer is calling an upper layer. Yeah. And then sometimes we find like a pattern of copy and paste. So the same uh, mistake is there like five times <laughs> because someone copied it and copied it. And, and it's so important to see that in that moment because if you don't, um, this will sort of, after a while, everybody thinks, oh, it has to be like this. Yeah, you know? This yeah. is ex an exception. It's necessary. No, so so you, know, you know you've got a real legacy system uh. 
when you can't tell what code's been copy and pasted because it's evolved in yeah. different ways. Yeah. Well, th this is where I actually um, relate to metrics because um, I have some tools that can find duplicated source code yeah. with tolerances. Oh. So you can, you can find things which are fuzzy matching. Yeah. On on and this is, this is, this is uh, something to do as well. Yeah, yeah. so, okay, so I'm, I'm curious, I'm, I'm looking at your screen, let me, let yeah. me pop it up, but you have, a, you have a cute little cartoon on Yeah, I, I love these cartoons. Screen. So let's, let's share that with the audience here. Yeah. And what's, what's so, this? So this is an architecture cartoon I like a lot. Geek and Poke is doing a lot of cartoons uh, on software engineering, and this yeah. one, um, well, there are two guys watching the screen, and one of them said, oh, didn't you say this system had a nice and clean architecture? And the other one says, of course. And then they look at it, and then he tried to explain, you just can't see it now. It's hidden behind the code. <laughs> and yeah, this is, this is really when there's a lot of technical depth in my um, in my point, yeah. in my view, because if I, if I see a system and I say, well, what's the architecture here? Tell me. And the people say, we have layers, we have modules. Okay. And then I start to f uh, try to find them in the code. Yeah. And they are not there. Not there. Oh, well, you have to take this and this and this and this. And then you really see a really rotten system, maybe a system even where nobody ever had an idea about an architecture. Yeah, you know, so maybe the architecture is created after the fact to explain the system, yeah. or well. maybe it's a whiteboard architecture that doesn't actually exist. Yeah, well, for me it's a bit, um, um, well, the other day this three million lines of, lines of code system yeah. was amazing because um, there have been someone with a good idea of architecture, even 15 years ago, and you can still see it, and it's still oh. leading and guiding the people. We were really amazed because we could find like 10% of things that were wrong, but the rest was in good shape. Hmm. And, and this, is, this was really amazing to see, and very often I find systems where nobody had an idea in the beginning, and it's like, you know, it's like uh, a big mess. Yeah, okay, so that was just a case where maybe there was some technical debt that built up over time, but yeah. it had a good architecture yeah. underneath it. Yeah. And, and this, I mean... So maybe that was a happy, happier customer yeah. than usual. Yeah, <laughs> this, system, this system really grew up in, in, in good, uh, with a good shape in the beginning. Huh? Yeah. So I liked it a lot. And, well, with, with those people working on that system, it was not so difficult to discuss as well because they had an idea of their architecture, which was still present. Mm -hmm. They had a structure and all this. So we could easily, we, I mean, we were there for four days and after two days, we had the whole system uh, organized, modeled, and we knew what it, what it was doing. So yeah. we could go over to performance and other, other things, which was very quick for a large thing like that. Okay, that yeah. sounds very good. So maybe so. last thing is um, just so folks know how they can contact you. Yeah. Um, bring, up, bring up your company website. Yeah. I'll put yeah. it up on screen when that. you're ready. And this, is, this has been a fun interview for me. I mean, we were, we were yeah. chatting earlier, but I, in a previous life, <laughs> I used to do some stuff with technical debt. Yeah. Um, and agile methodology stuff. Oh. And I'm not in the internet, that's the no, point. No, but wait I, a second, I show I, I have a really good internet for you. Just you have a log really on to Night Hacking Network. Ah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Oops. So I used to do quite a lot with Agile, Steve on Java, all lowercase. Java. S T E V E. Oh, S T E V E. E O N. O N. J A V A. See, now everybody in the network knows how to get on the fast network. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll, it'll it'll be fine. It'll it'll, it'll connect fine. in a second. Then you yeah. can you can pop the website up. There yeah, you go. cool. Yep. Uh, oh, this is me uh, on our website, but maybe I just show the whole website here. Like, yeah. So this is okay. So I can find uh, more information are? about you at WPS. Yeah, and um, I'm in the architecture area down here. Nice. We're doing a lot of uh, multi-touch uh, table oh, applications. Cool. So we call it business software that really makes fun. So this is what yeah. we are Did doing. Did you see the, the voting machines around here? The, like the conference voting? Yeah. Duke, yeah. Duke, Duke voting machines? Yeah, yeah. I've been yeah. Uh, yeah. doing a lot of yes and good. <laughs> and 
oh, from my I, college I have when he for was you talking as, as well. Um, if you want. Yeah. So for the embarrassment of being on a live stream, you oh, get a, a night thank hacking you. sticker. Very good. That's good. I can put it on my computer like this. Yeah. 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 Cool. Thank you. All right. So thank you very much for uh, the short you. interview. This has been a lot of fun. And I hope your session goes very well this yeah. afternoon. Yeah. I hope so too. Yeah. <laughs> thank you.